and um, I don't know, you know, can you charge a guy $500 to rebuild his rods? <laughs> Probably not. Um, you know, if this was a 350 and not a small journal, uh, you know, we could probably get some aftermarket rods. It's almost cheaper to do the, it is cheaper to do the aftermarket rods. There's no doubt about it. But uh, when people want the original rods and original engine because it's a nostalgic or vintage engine, then, you know, it's just kind of one of them deals where you just do them and hopefully, you know, you break even on them. But uh, to do them right takes a, quite a bit of work so we've got them going together once they get all torqued up we're going to uh, make sure that uh, we've got enough to take out We might have to go back and touch up a couple of them. Depends on how far off the housing bores are on these. Um, when they were frozen, the engine, I was, I try not to hit on the big end of the rod. You don't want to spring it. Okay, it's kind of tight in here, but anyways, we got the rods all together. They're torqued. Um, we checked a few of them for size. I've got my diamonds on my CR uh, mandrel, and we're going to rough them in. We're going to see how it goes. We'll start with, um, now I know some guys like running two rods at a time, but I like running them one at a time. Uh, I might try to run two, but uh, sometimes it's hard for me to hang on to them. And my hands are getting old and sore, so I don't really like getting them all beat up. So it's usually easier for me to hang on to one rod at a time. And uh, we'll see how it goes. nice all the way around. We just got to get them to size. Fair amount to take out. I'll run the rods until they start getting kind of warm and then I'm going to let them set and I'll finish them tomorrow. This one's going to start coming in fairly soon.
stop there and let it cool off. Yeah, we're moving now. Okay, I have the chamfer tool for the sunning and I can run it on my own, but I prefer to use a taper cone for cylinder sleeves and I'm just going to touch up these chamfers and break the edge. And uh, they're roughed in under a thousandths and uh, when I'm done doing this then I'll finish the rod. You can see that it does a pretty decent job. Then I'll hit the other edge just a little tiny bit, not much. Okay, that rod's done. Yeah, maybe just a little more on this side because it ain't gonna cost nothing to do it. There, that's good. Done. A lot of chatter on that one. Must have been a Friday afternoon when they did that one or something. I don't know. Some of these old rods can be pretty crude, but they worked. Okay, we've got the rods cooled down. I double checked the gauge to make sure it's properly set, just to make sure we don't have any problems. Uh, I've chamfered the rod. There is about a half a thousandth in these rods and I need to take out. Um, we'll pin fit them another day, but uh, we're going to do the big ends. We're doing them right now. And uh, I'm going to fire up the machine and start on them. I just want to sneak up on the stone a little bit here and see where the high spot is. Okay, we're two tenths, two tenths away from target size. Uh, 
you know, I got a couple twos and I got a couple threes in there, so I'll, I'll balance them and I'll uh, restrike them. Uh, thank you for watching.